Welcome back, everyone, to episode 6 of us playing Kaiser Reich, in which, well, we're just gonna wait for the war to kick off. But Wilhelm, Wilhelm Grona dies. Judah Wilhelm Grona, a renowned hero of the Valkyrie, has passed away today in Bonstadt. During the Valkyrie, his reforms of the military railway system helped the Imperial German Army gain the edge on its Entente rivals, but his cooperation with civilian authorities as head, as head of the Kriegsamt earned him criticism due to the cooperation with trade unions and inflammatory comments towards corporate interests. It was temporarily disgraced. Grown the return to importance in the army, after Lindendorf's fall and became involved in civilian politics. Earning a name not just as a capable military commander, but as an able liaison of the hero's interests in the government and in the Reichstag. His passing is more about his peers in the army and his family. The hero needs more men like him, as we're back here in uh, good old Italy, and uh, I don't think we can help. Yeah, we're not going to do that. Uh, yeah, uh, we lost some territory here. Our allies aren't doing so well. It is what it is, and they're just wasting manpower. Kind of dumb if you ask me, but it is what it is. Um, and I did make sure that we have improved light cruiser hull. Actually, let's edit that. Uh, I don't like these guns on this one. These are actually screens. Thank you very much. Uh, but yeah, we're doing better here. We're doing okay here. I just hope we're ready for the goddamn war, because if we're not, well, we're kind of screwed. So, and we're also trying out this in industry thing. You see, this little Secretariat for Arbeitbeschaffung will work or not for us. Hopefully it does. I'm hoping it does. We're also going to save up a lot of political power here because I want to grab the Red Baron. And I'd also like to grab Decisive Battle, Wolfgang Wegener. That would also be fantastic if we could do that. But time will tell. It's June 1st. Things are going to explode soon. The Damocles Project. Oh boy. And what do we have here? We're probably going to need some fuel. We might need some anti-air maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. And then more military factories too. Just more milis, please. Mass machine tools are good. Uh, should have got some better guns, cannons, whatnot. My bad. We're looking better on artillery. This is good to have too. So, what do we have here? Uh, industrial projects. So, here's industrial projects. The black money crisis and the rearmament of the syndicalists of powers require us to enact deeper intervention into the imperial economy. We must make sure the machines of the war are turning, developing a vast industrial base to give labor to the people, to the people, and guns to the hair, and arrive to the second Valkyrie prepared for anything that may come. Complete the Middle, middle Land Canal, huh? The Middle Land Canal began construction in 1906 as an ambitious project to connect the largest waterways of the country and correct a direct shipping route from the Rhinelands of Berlin. Before and after the war, construction went slowly from the Dortmund Ems Canal to Send, then P Pine, and then the Braunschweig. Now the final link remains. Magdeburg, where the Middle Land Canal will connect the Elbe Havel Canal and so the Elbe River. This should require thousands of workers and lots. Lots of intense manual labor, but once completed, it will become a massive boon of the German internal trade. Well, we've got to do all these. Complete the Lenmul Dam. Consistent floods in the eastern Ore Mountains, a growing need for a local source of electricity have gotten the Saxon government to begin constructing dams on the kingdom's notable, most notable rivers. The Malta Dam and the Klingenberg Dam were completed before the Valkyrie, and the beginning of the economic crisis caused by the Black Monday crash have renewed plans to, da to dam the wild uh, Weisleitz, uh, Weisleitz River as well. Massive slabs of nice from Saxon quarries need to be carried and brought to the construction site and new roads need to be built to route around the expected dam reservoir, and both of these tasks shall be completed with the labor of thousands of German unemployed citizens, or workers. Pearl extraction northern moorlands. North Germany is home to numerous bogs, marshes, and moors, which have been a headache to the local inhabitants for centuries. They have been colonized and inhabited, however, and through this colonization we have learned about the economic potential. More lands are a great source of peat, a low-quality substitute for coal or wood, and which can be dug from the ground and used as a supplementary fuel by local industries and private homes. The pro government shall establish a peat mining company in Mecklenburg, partially owned by the state and partially by the Grand Duchy of Mecklenburg-Schwerin, and recruit hundreds of employees to extract peat across the region. Expand hydroelectric powers in the Alps. The Alpine regions are home to numerous fast flowing rivers with untapped potential for electric electricity generation. Hydroelectric dams, large and small alike, have already been constructed in Bavaria and Baden, but further imperial support can ensure that this industry grows even greater than before. In addition, dam construction is a very labor-intensive project, or process, one in which we can employ many unemployed workers so they can make a living. So we need four of these, and five of these, god dang it, industrial projects, uh, um, support imperial light industry. I l we read this one before, I think, so if you want to do this, please go ahead. We're going to support imperial light industry, though. Germany is the manufacturer capital of Europe, and this does not mean just steel and guns, light industries. <clears throat> Such as the food industry, glass, roadworking, and other utility goods are the centerpieces of our prosperity as well. The efforts of the state will rejuvenate these sectors and ensure that our status as an industrial he hegemon remains unchallenged. Yeah, 
now. Man, we'll see. How are we doing down here? How do you continually attack? Five divisions! Why would you attack? Oh. Levi Papal, Confidant Ludwig Kass, and the Bishop of Münster Clemens, August von Galen, the Association for the Defense of French Catholics, has brought attention to the violation of the rights of the faithful France for almost a decade. It's time to make use of this association's extensive contracts, uh, to, uh, uh, contacts to find and support large scale resistance to the communist rule. And now they're attacking us. Look at that. As long as our guys show up, we'll be fine. Good God. Uh. Oh, my Empire, well, they're doing alright. China's doing okay. How's America looking? Holy crap! Well, the American Union state ain't doing so well, even though they're supposed to be a legitimate government. Pacific states are, are doing oh, pretty darn well, and Canada's doing very well. Honestly, as long as uh, the Reds don't win, that's all I care about. Look at the Chicago, it's a very tip now. Hey, there's Gary. Gary, scary Gary. Oh, choice of agenda, Ignac, Amelia Europa, arms exports? Sure. We gotta save some political power here too. I guess we got these guys on our side too, for now. He's going to join the Entente. Makes sense. Um, you guys are looking okay. You're not great. These guys should should be okay. I don't know. Oh man, I don't know. That's a lot of divisions there, man. Of course, they don't have a lot of visions up there, so... So, we'll see! Falka, Mabelvelka, and Tona are two types of Germany's largest furniture companies, and each employ over a thousand workers for the production of various carpentry, such as the famous number 14 chair, also known as the bistro chair, which no cafe in Europe can do without. Their importance during wartime cannot be understated either. Furniture factories can easily switch to the production of bunk beds, boxes, and other military material. Providing these two companies with an additional government contracts will establish cooperation between them and the government and allow their wartime potential to be put to use. That'd be fantastic. So, we got three of them done. Uh, has been finished. Oh, God. They have to be finished? Oh, God. Uh, that's not good. Well, we didn't quite get there. God dang it. Are you kidding me? These are all 60 days. Bruh. God dang it. Well, we tried. We're gonna get hit by some severe, uh, well, maybe not, maybe it's not severe, but some sort of, like, penalty against us for not being able to do that in time, which really sucks. The unification of Poland. And it's a day of national celebration in the People's Polish uh, Republic. After lengthy negotiations with the Austrians, the dual monarchies agreed to a union between Austrian-controlled Poland and the Polish heartlands. This union has brought Vienna considerable goodwill among the Poles, and their influence has greatly grown. Uh, even though some harsher words or voices in the cabinet have called the treaty a greedy power grab by the Austrians, there's no cause to be uh, too alarmed. Poland has promised to uphold all relevant treaties with us regardless of the relationship with Austria, as long as our trains run to the east, all is well. Congratulations! I congratulate Gabriel Narutowicz. On his achievements. Oh, that's fantastic. Good job, guys. That's awesome. Even the person I would not have given that up, but you know, whatever. Hey, more divisions, thank God, Jesus Christ. Oh, God. Um, we're definitely going to need you. Uh, I don't know if we can just hold here, though. What's our forts like? Six? That's actually pretty decent. Um, just in case, I'm going to throw you guys here because it's very thin towards the center. And we'll readjust these if we have to. You know what? Actually, I'm going to pull you guys out. When in doubt, pull out. So there you go. There you go. Oops. Do this. Reform yourselves. Stack it up. That's the main line here, so. Hello, come on. What are you doing? No, 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 no. You stupid ding dongs. There you go. Do it like that. Do it like this. Do it like that. Boom. There you go. Social Democratic criticism in the Reich stack. If you want to do this, please go ahead. We have enough already for now. We're going to increase our already needed our needs too. Um, it takes up north just in case. And who's going to lead? Von Lee, welcome back. And just in case, we'll probably go over to town and do this. Arms industries, infrastructure projects, uh, arms industries. I like financial injection personally. All of Beijing, goodbye. Legacy of the Canal Rebellion. 
After more than three decades, one of the Germany's most ambitious and controversial building projects has finally reached its completion. With the last connection piece between Adler and Elbe finished, the Mittelan Canal, Europe's longest artificial inland waterway connection, is open for traffic. Ships loaded with coal and iron in the world can now reach industrial centers in Hanover, Brunswick, Brandenburg, and Saxony without large detours via the Northern North Sea, and even have to access to the faraway markets in East Elbia. Even though most of the public, including the Conservatives, rejoiced with the completion of this prestige project, this most certainly wasn't always the case back in 1899. When its construction efforts were initiated by Kaiser Wilhelm II himself, the canal was harshly opposed by the East Elbian Junker elite who feared the connection between the Rhine and Elba would flood rural Prussia with cheap imported grain. Resistance by the DKP and the Agrarian League in the Prussian Landtag was so overwhelming that the Kaiser had dropped his ambitious plans for the time being. The resistance of the so-called Canal Rebels was one of the first precedents of conservative opposition to the plans of Kaiser and government. By now, of course, all these particular hardcore protectionists have long passed away and have been replaced by a generation of younger, more compromising conservatives. But nonetheless, it is interesting to see how drastically the stance of a selected political party can, on a certain topic can change over time. Andere Seiten, Andere Seiten. Fantastic. Great. And we still need more military factories, we need more planes, so we ain't stopping anytime soon. Fall of Baton Rouge, well, there goes American Union State. Goodbye. We have 40 divisions on this front, hopefully it's enough. Good God, I hope it's enough. We, know, we don't have enough guns. Oh, God, good, dear God. Start the war off with no guns is, or not enough guns is not good. These are basic, but they're necessary. I think it. A beer is an important part of German culture and remains an important industry to this day. It was here that the Reinheitsgebot, the first beer production safety regulation in Europe, was promulgated in 1516 and influences beer production standards in the German Empire to this day. While the beer market is weakened in northern Germany, it is more centralized under several prominent brands, while the south, especially Bavaria, is home to a vast world of small breweries that center the local population. Through cooperation with the German Brewers Association, we can t uh, target state support towards productive and high quality establishments and ensure that the beer brewing industry grows unimpeded. Let's see how bad these debuffs are. Do they actually take any more tiles? No, they do not. See, as long as we're here, we, we can hold more than fine. We're more than good. And we actually become a trickster and an organizer, too. Look at that. Uh, help me out here. Wait, what? How did we lose? Well, never mind. Conscription crisis in Quebec. Max speed. Uh, legation accounts for votes on restoring American rights. Now that America has been reunited, it's been seeking to restore its power worldwide as petition the legation counts for a return of its voting rights. While well, the act is forced to stability in Asia before, it'd be really wise to limit our own power further. Yeah, you can prove it, why not? Uh, well, we don't need every advantage we can possibly get. Trying to fight in the air. Set in the dog, if you want to put that, please go ahead. Monarchy is starting Greece, good. Um, so we've got that going on, establishing national unity front. The next council is followed by a growing clique of loyalists, but so far they remain merely a clique. The standard of transform is following into a political movement, a front of unity which is intended to supersede any partisanship and establish unity in the Reichstag. Yeah, man. Six research slots, finally. Uh, I'll use that immediately. They still don't want to absorb Hungary, which is really weird and awkward. I don't like it. Alright, I think we're going to grab this too. Do not let Rome fall. The vote passes, is interesting. Yeah, finding it, having a, you guys defend in the mountains, smart idea. He's level 4 still. White Ruthenia contracts a German company. Well, the White Ruthenian government, needing equipment for its meager armed forces, has contracted a German firm to help them supply with old military hardware from the Valkyrie, long retired from her stockpile. We welcome our businesses of making profits in their eastern allies and bringing us some profits, as long as they can deal with the Russians in the end. Yeah, awesome. We need way more guns now, holy crap. If we can wait for 13 more days, we actually might be able to do War Preparations Act. Guaranteed tobacco supply from a cigarette company. 
The German tobacco industry is consolidated under several conglomerates such as Ritmitzma, Ritmitzma and Balchari. And while its vice remains unpopular as ever, the profits of the companies that are providing it are not as considerable. Purple tobacco harvest in Turkey and other tobacco growing regions, as well as rising taxes, have severely dented the revenues of the cigarette producers. As this industry is also an important tax taxpayer, it must ensure it survives by reducing tariffs on tobacco leaves and scaling down anti smoking campaigns. Well, it goes that one. Get in there. I want to keep attacking your okay, that. Stop losing territories to Sicilies. Come on. We don't need a United Italy under the Red Banner. We send four, okay. I'm a little surprised they haven't attacked us yet. I like doing the Antal, which is pretty normal. Do you want to do anything about this, guys? I know you're also losing. What else we got here? Captain Group? Sure, why not? Well, I guess we want more preparedness act, more political power, more prepared for the second Valkyrie. Fantastic. I wasn't expecting that. You know what, at this point, we're going to solidify control. I want more stability, though. Please crack down. France and the Mediterranean may claim to be the home of the European wines, but southern Germany also has traditionally produced famous high-quality wines for domestic and foreign consumption. Rheinhessen is the largest of the 16th German Weinen Abgebiete. Wine regions lies on the left bank of the Rhine is renowned for, renowned for its uh, uh, Liebfranisch, a semi-sweet white wine. Considerable investment into these wine producers in the opening of the German wine market for extensive exports, though also the assurance that the good name of German wines would not be sold by cheaply produced mass alternatives will show the rapid growth of the German wine industry. In contracts for Glasfabrik Lamberts, the so-called Glasschütte, established in the Fisch. Still, Geberge by Lorenz Lambert is in the late 19th century. It's also one of the most important glass producers in the German Empire due to its universally, or universality. Its grounds are able to produce prof, pro, uh, prolite, ornamental, wired, and antimony free solar glass and relies upon local resources rather than importing it from overseas. Provided this company with government contracts will establish a beneficial relationship and allow us to foster military grade glass production, precise craftsmanship, which can be used in weaponry, planes, and aircraft. Oh, nice. Yeah, looking better here already. Founding Conference of the National Unity Front. <clears throat> Ever since von Schlag rise to power, as follows, well both in government and across the nation, call for him to turn his movement to a national revival into an official organization, one which can aid him in his vision and provide him with a base of support against his numerous opponents. For the longest time, Schlag was not recipient to such calls. Such a move would only make German politics more divisive, as he explained back in 1936. Times change, however, and the Reichskanzler has given this informal approval for the formation of a movement standing behind the Reichskanzler, the German National Unity Front. Reichstag members of the Schleicher Block, civil society groups, and circles such as the League for the Reorganization of the Reich, Bund der Erneuerung des Reiches, or Lutherbund, and numerous independents and right-wing politicians find opportunity to align with the Reichskanzler are expected to appear in the party's founding conference in Berlin. In the beating heart of the empire, Schleicher himself, emphasizing his independent, all-unifying position, is not expected to become a member of the party, but will be a key speaker, and his position will shape the direction that his following will take. Foreign observers watch with concern, witnessing hints and makings of a populist right-wing movement that already took Russia and Romania by storm. More conservative and moderate press, but still all concerning development in German politics. The Red General's following will finally receive form. Break down the rules of legislation. We cannot move against the Reichstag Eagles yet, but we have tricks to keep it under control. Nudging and amending the rules of the Reichstag will make it more difficult for the opposition to speak, easy for the government to push through laws, and limiting parliamentary debate to the minimum. It all adds up, creating parliamentarianism without democracy. Oh, this one's good too, though. Nationalized oppression, secret police. The Parisische Geheimpolizei has long been infamous among the socialists and national traitors as a powerful weapon at the disposal of the kingdom. However, the entire empire needs a service, which will get the Prussian police agencies into one organization controlled by the central government and put to use to establish order. More. I probably need some fuel, and I need some more dockyards too. 
Oh, we get contracted to another company. Fantastic. We we'll do this once we have enough political power to do all this stuff at the same time. I also want to solidify control, the nature of the front. The concept of partisanship itself is controversial in the German right. As the partisan conflicts within the Reichstag and the public at large uh, are seen as a cause of the empire's decline. A political party could never truly represent the entirety of Germany, all of its different political, social, and ethnic groups, as it must necessarily attach itself to a specific ideology and worldview. An alternate solution for the Reichskanzler and his followers would be to establish not a party, but a movement, one which transcends party lines and focuses on organic work rather than petty politicking. The Fatherland Party was one such movement before its reorganization into a party, allowing members from different political parties to participate, to participate and work together in numerous interest leagues, such as the Agrarian League and the Navy League, as also success, successful examples. Perhaps no political parties in Germany can remain, but simply decayed irrelevance as an entire nation from left to far right joined in support of the Reichskanzler, or perhaps the organizational efficiency of a political party with strict membership and ideology will be more helpful to Schleicher's goals. It's a political party, representing a new force in German politics. It's not a party, but a movement for every patriotic German. Eh, yeah, I'll go with that one. So, when do we get war? We don't go to war with them. They go to war with us, don't they? It's not the head of town with them, anyways. We have six research slots. That's fine. Um, don't get me wrong. We're still hanging out here. Divisions on the left. I think it was before. If you're into this, please go ahead. Fantastic. The breadth of the front. The political parties in the German Empire are mass parties, surrounded by civil society organizations, which provide practical benefits to party members and develop desperate members in the communities. The reach of any individual party is limited due to natural processes, however. Now entrenched in power, the front can make a step further and develop itself into a mass movement that will make itself permanent, total in daily life. Youth organizations, women's groups, veteran groups, and affiliates in different sectors of the society, such as agricultural, sports, and the arts and businesses, all would help orchestrate the creation of a loyal, dutiful German nation, where discipline and patriotic allegiance prevails, of course. This will also mean the participation and the front as a sign of political loyalty and thus permission to advance in public career. Oh, yes. This will make Schleicher's uh, regime veer closer towards the total control pursued by the national populace in Russia or Romania, in which the party and the state have become effectively one and the same. In addition, such massification and partisanship will not appease everybody. Politicians and aristocrats in Schleicher's circles see the move as a dilution of politics into more spectacle, mere spectacle in life and speeches rather than organic work. We should follow mass movements, youth groups, and make us a permanent in daily life. Group of Trisha's loyals. No need for mass following. I like that one. Even though I want more stability, I like that one more. It gives more political power, too. Failings of parliamentarianism. Though it came to power through the democratic process and has spoken positively of the March Constitution and the German parliamentary system, the Reichskanzler has surrounded himself with men and women that have no love for parliamentarianism, and it's no mystery that he himself prefers a strong hand regime. The parliamentarization of German governance has led to weak governments led by men of no charisma, and filled with sycophants and all attention has been drawn towards the Reichstag instead, as battles and as scandals. Professor Karl Schmidt, one of Schleicher's allies and participant in the founding conference, has known throughout the Empire as a critic of parliamentarianism. Uh, his thesis of liberal democracy is a system detached from the nation which fosters a uh, new aristocracy and gradually enters decay and resonates with many in Schleicher's circle. Uh, if we include these theses as tenets of a party program, our solution to the decay of liberal democracy will be a government of decisive action which wields power beyond the slow parliamentary process in order to address the true desires of the people of the German nation. I like the war sport, but make no overcomments on the democratic system of the program. I think that'd be for the best. Keep building. Comments on economic policy. Ever since the Valkyrie, where he criticized war profiteering as an office bureaucrat, officer bureaucrat in the Kriegsamt, Schleicher has held the reputation of, <clears throat> of an economically progressive politician. Among the alliances he tactically developed during the post war period are several trade unions and key trade unionists, such as Lothar Erdmann and Leotard Theo, uh, Theodor Leipard are in his circle, endorsing the formation of a national state-controlled trade union federation to mediate conflicts between business and labor. The Reichskanzler has also not shied away from endorsements of economic autarky and military-focused developmentalism. With the efforts of the state, he believes a stronger, self-reliant economy can be built to serve the imperial German army. Economic policy is a major point of contention in the debates on the party program of the front. While the left-wing of Schleicher's movement hopes he continues with a reputation as a red general, the conservatives and business leaders he has earned the trust with, of wish for him to exceed with the heartless populism. This would much rather, uh, they would much rather prefer a stronger stance on cynicalism than the root of all evil in the modern day. Emphasis on bond labor and creating harmony between workers and businesses. Emphasize necessity of national defense and taxing cynicalism. Remain vague on economic policies. The raid on Christiansfeld. Danish thugs have brutally attacked the village of Christiansfeld, killing a uh, soldier on leave and two custom officials in the process of hurting German-speaking villagers, uh, German speakers in the village. Unsurprisingly, when the local garrison intervened, the cowards quickly fell at lead back to Denmark, leaving us without the perpetrators. Denmark should extradite those thugs right now. I think we could, could go to war these guys and blitz them, but defense of cultural values. Culturally conservative, Schleicher has made comments in the past years that many of Germany's economic and cultural problems have arisen because of the loss of the connection to the soil and the nation, of course. 
and responded positively to proposed restrictions on uh, free speech, the defamation of the state, and the corruption of the arts. Uh, it is a view that he shares with much of the driven right, and emphasizing these views could grant the Reich's counter powerful allies, the so-called national revolutionaries of the DVLP, united around Ulrich von Hassel, rebuilt their party on populist conservative grounds with a heavy dose of Christian rural culture and Salungspolitik, right wing unity politics. Not only that, but their ideal Germany is the one led by an imperialist, a charismatic strongman who can transcend toxic parliamentarianism to guide the empire's sole capable ruler, Schleicher's persona, though rather too pragmatic and progressive for their tastes, can attract at least some ranks of the DVLP. This entail the specific articles on protecting traditional values in the Front's program, as well as even stronger emphasis on anti-socialism and anti-parliamentarianism, attract national revolutionaries by endorsing Christian rural values. Remaining vague on cultural policies and religion, Denmark concedes. The Danish have conceded. They have arrested those responsible beyond the raid and to properly deliver them to us. The German court of law will decide the fate of the barbarous murders as it should be. Report on disappearance. So there's that. There you go. Fantastic. So, oh, there goes the Japanese centralization of the state. Uh, one of Schleicher's key goals is to further this, and complete the centralization of the German Empire at the expense of its member states, thus completing the vision of Otto von Bismarck. Though some moves in the centralized direction, granting additional powers and authorities to the regime in Berlin, wielding soft power to curtail the unruly southern states, can be accomplished relatively quickly, the constitutional balance of power between the empire and the states is much harder to alter. The Reich's Chancellor places his hopes in the Second Valkyrie, however, should he lead the empire to victory against the syndicalists, the post-war fervor will surely grant him the political capital to amend or even rewrite the imperial constitution to his liking. Rumors of the so-called Schlacker Constitution already scattered throughout the newspapers thanks to compliment, comments slipped by the government authorities on the necessity to enact constitutional reform. But the foundation of the front gives an opportunity to make this, this era official. Such a decision would greatly alarm the states, but to help unite the centralist elements of the German politics around our banner. Eh, just put one up. Oh, she was from East Asia. Cool. Or to East Asia. It's fine too. Position of the Jewish population. Political anti Semitism has been present in German politics for many decades. In time, the Bolshevik and syndicalist revolutions and the Black Monday crisis have only seen it grow. Among the grassroots rural agrarian right and slowly growing and strengthening middle class in the cities, xenophobic positions see widespread acclaim from calls to curtail Jewish business and land speculation, immigration, and perceived influence in newspapers, and to extreme positions such as expulsion to Palestine. Of the major political parties, only the DVLP explicitly has anti Semitic points in the program, but other right wing parties have to accept prevalence of anti Semitic positions among their membership. Schleicher is personally not anti-Semitic and has described anti-Semitism as the greatest fall in the interview before his chancellorship, and his overarching idea of a unified, unified, united German society may include the German Jews as well, but his party will inevitably have to address anti-Semitism somehow or else risking losing a position or portion of the support based to the radical right. Living ourselves unofficial dogmas for the most. The program will mention goals to curtail non-German business and culture. Yeah, I'm gonna do that one. We need more tungsten. Produce more, produce more, produce more, 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 more. Improve what we have too as well. Keep building more. So are they gonna go to war with us? I mean we're pretty much ready to go. Why are they not? Come on, Monat. The friend of the monarchy. Wow, they have a really tiny tree. No mainstream political party in the German Empire calls for the abolition of the monarchy, while the proof of the current causes can certainly vary, and it's not very positive even among the right. The monarchy is, as an institution is used as a symbol of uh, <clears throat> Germany as a whole, and its replacement with an elected presidency is either extreme radicalism or a vague distant change that nothing is, is nothing to die for. The front is expected to fit itself in this Overton window as well. The question lies, however, on how much this monarchism should be emphasized in the program. Explicit monarchism and exploitations towards the Kaiser would strengthen the trust of the conservatives who are suspicious of Schlachter's intentions. Uh, but would weaken the Reich's counselors of standing among the liberal and social democratic wings of the German politics. To the monarch, you best serve as a figurehead that every party could safely ignore, proclaim that we are, first and foremost, a monarchist party, and extol the Kaiser. Conference finish. The High Commissioners convened the council to vote on a spe special motion, whether or not to allow the legation cities a fleet of its own. With the world growing more polarized and war torn by the day, it's only natural that the isolated legation cities should look to their own defense, but can we afford to spare the cost of providing ship for the fleet? Yeah, of course we can. 
All important questions regarding the production ideology of the National Unity Front have been settled, and as expected, the majority of the attendees have declared their full allegiance with attendance of the program. After it was approved by a majority vote in the convention, a series of speeches followed. Among the most well-received speakers were Hans Luther, Lothar Edman, Otto Gessler, Siegfried von Karl Dorf, and Paul Reich, all of whom were also included in the Central Committee of the newly established party, finally. While the Reichs-Counselor himself spoke a few words before the delegates, commending them on the duty of the renewal of the Empire that they have chosen to place their shoulders on, and stating that the delegates gathered today are certainly up to the task, and I hope to achieve productive work with them. Schleicher himself remains independent, so the chairmanship of the front falls to Hans Luther, the former mayor of Essen and the secretary of finance, however. He is suspected to be merely a first among equals in the Central Committee and a figurehead. After a final collective singing of Heil der M. Sieger Kranz, the National Union Front was proudly proclaimed to be founded. Hurrah, followers of the Second Bismarck! Huzzah, huzzah, huzzah! Military police, good. It's almost 1940. We want better planes. Hey, nationalize those guys, good. Leading the flock. We're finally, this one. Middle, Middle Europe is already designed a project. It's only right that we assume a leading role within it. Ensure that our organization reflects our interests. First and foremost, and draw all other members of the organization closer to us. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, the, both divisions are there, right there. No, oh, nice. Well, hopefully they do well. They're still attacking like crazy. The boat passes, good for them. I mean, the more time they give us, the stronger we'll become. So I'm not super worried about it. So <sighs> please stop attacking. Hey, they're making gains. And we have 53 divisions on the front, so we should be decent to at least hold, I would assume. Well, some places are more scared than others. And we need more guns again. Wuhan, huh? Can you guys actually do this? Yeah, you might be able to. As we're leading the flock. Guess they're doing this one too. There we go. Earlier, so break it down. Yes, please. They contract another company. I love it. Hey, we're doing better here. Nice. Good stuff. Good stuff. Can you actually attack here too? You know what? We're still gonna go this group. I don't care. I guess up there. Very nice. Maintenance companies. We're gonna start going with this one. I'm really just trying to kill them off. Nice. Help them out. Help them out. Oh, just of agenda, arms industry. That's fine. Hey, with Italy coming into the war, that's actually really good for us. We need more fuel, probably, too. So it's 1940, and they haven't got a war with us yet, which I'm a little suspect of. Not gonna lie. in there, over there. Workers clash with far-right activists. Oh boy. A protest organized by trade unions and socialist youth against our government today ended unceremoniously, as instead a brawl broke out between them and a kind of protest organized by far-right parties. Actually, I read before earlier, so if you read this again, please go ahead. I think 60 divisions should be decent enough on this line. I could be wrong, so we're going to throw these back on the Russian line. There you go. That should be good. Ah, Georgia requested to join the Reichspact. During the Belk first Valkyrie, we hope to secure Georgia's and in the Caucasus. The government has remained friendly to ours since the, our independence. With now the international order under threat, they have requested to join our alliance. Yeah, absolutely. Hey. Shilling of Avricourt. An unfortunate incident just occurred during a military exercise in the pro progress of alsace Lothringen. Two of our new long-range artillery batteries, manned by young recruits, have mistakenly shot at a small French village by the name of Avricourt due to its poor firing range evaluation, according to the Red French broadcast. Several locals would have been killed by this accidental shelling. 
The military police is currently interrogating the officer and the NCO is in charge by the French. Shamelessly taking advantage of the situation, have issued an inflammatory statement demanding official apologies from the Kaiser and cabinet and threatening Germany of unpredictable consequences if we refuse to comply. Uh, I don't know how many different events we get saying, hey, we don't want war yet. I kind of want to say, we, we apologize. It's, it's our fault, you know. It, we want to look like the good guys, right? Because we are the good guys. France, a com common France demands a compensation, huh? Unsatisfied by our sincere apology after the Avancourt uh, incident. The Khan, whose best divisions are now concentrating at the border, now pretend that the bombing of Avricourt being a deliberate aggression in time of peace must be compensated by Germany, and demands financial reparations to cover materials as well as moral damage suffered by the victims of French public infrastructures. The German people will not accept to, to give in to such endless and baseless claims, however. Um, the military situation is deteriorating fast as French commando units have successfully crossed the border at at least four occasions, even for a short time have made contact with French speaking militants in Lorraine, so it might be wiser to agree to pay these reparations and ease attention to the commune. What if you refuse? That would give us more time with these guys. No choice but to comply. Hmm. But do we want to comply? That's the real question. Hello? There you go. Good job, Pope. We apologize, and no, no, no one died, so... How are we looking? We're doing okay. Armor cars are actually coming up, too. At this point, it's probably a bad idea, but I want more punch. There you go. I'm gonna need a lot more already now. Oh my god. One... Yep. All right, before the war starts. <laughs> uh, mobilization of the masses. We must constantly foster a re outreach to the masses and establish public organizations, which involve as many systems as possible. A state-owned youth social societies, sports clubs, labor services, unions, and party chapters. Our regime must be permeate everyday life, and the people must rally behind to give us an invincible foundation. Can you guys actually win there, maybe? Maybe? How are we doing with planes? You want to, like, do more? You're three out of three, so you have more than enough space. Accident above Svetja. The entire series of events started when a Belarusian farmer informed the police of the wreck of an aircraft that had fallen to his fields, the small village of Svetja, some 60 kilometers west from Vibetsk. When the police arrived at the scene, it was initially thought to be a civilian accident turned out to be a Russian scout plane. The plane was largely burned and its camera was removed. There was no sight of the pilot, though a manhunt was concerned in the entire district of Blesenkovichi. What was left in the plane was quickly delivered to the Borovka Air Base for further examination. Despite the pilot's attempts to destroy the machine, aviation engineers managed to identify the plane's little-known Kamov gyroplane, primarily equipped for aerial photography. It seems probable they had been photographing the important bridge of Svetka, which lies on the route from Vibets to Minsk. Evidence of this level of Russian war planning against Germany's eastern allies is alarming at an entirely new level, as many have believed that Russia would not dare try their luck with Germany once again. Germany has promised to deploy additional air escadres to Belarus, and the military readiness of the eastern allies has been increased. Our clouds are gathering. Come on, you can get over the river. We're so close. There you go, we got him. That's exactly what we wanted. Get there, get there. Very at least end the Red Menace in Italy. Get in there, come on. God dang it, come on. Oh, dang it, Grease. Oh, look at this, Master Soldier. Ooh, that's really cool. 
Let's so wall tank him. I do tank. I'll go defense. Nice. You cut these divisions off. That'd be fantastic. Oh, come on. There you go. We, I mean, we lost in Bulgaria, so... Kill yourself. God dang it, you're gonna kill us now. Uh, Exum. Let him leave first. Go in. Ah, there we go. Finally. That's a Russian state. I didn't really want to fight Rush first, but, you know, we'll take whoever. Thank God. Okay, so we have them. Mobilization of the masses is good. Operation Skondlst. We could go to war with them. So we had to wait till August 1st, 1940, more than 75% world tension. Uh, established a Wehrmacht. For too long, the Army, Navy, and Air Force of the German Empire has been independent of one another, hampering, hampering communication and cooperation between them. We should put them all in a unified armed force structure, the Imperial Defense Force, or the Wehrmacht. Yeah, we like that. Ball of Manila, nice. Can you get out here? Yes. Help us to destroy as much of them as possible before they can do anything else. And get some more artillery strength. Good. Help them out. Help, encircle, destroy. All good stuff. Uh, yeah, that's fine. He's learned a lot. Come on, and we got him. Very nice. Become a spy master. Need more arty, which is pretty normal. Arty, party, arty. Any arty? Oh, yes. We did. Good. And. Eh, it doesn't look like we can be there yet. Just keep holding for now. Yeah, we've done what we needed to do here. Oh, hello. Never mind. We need this, please. Good ahead. Don't care. Why can't we pierce? Was it piercing or something? Or I don't understand. Uh, they're attacking us again, so whatever. We did our job down there. I'm not super worried about it overall. Plus, air support, more. You guys are going to need planes. Hey! Uh, oh, look, finally. Hungary's gone. Nice job, guys. So we do it with these guys. 20 combo, it's still not bad. Um, there, take that. Anti-air. Take that, too. Throw the military police, that'd be nice. War begins. Okay, there we go. The beginning of the Second Valkyrie caught German society unprepared. And not only because Germany was not an instigator of the conflict this time, since 1934, it has been occupied with internal conflicts and partisan squabbles, all of which were far more relevant to the politicians and the common people than distant worries of another military conflict. <clears throat> 
Russian aggression in the East and cynical rearming in the West were concerning for sure, but the expectation that was undefeated Imperial Germany army will make quick work of the aggressors. As a result, the German Empire enters the war and prepared, and rapid mobilization policies will need to be passed in order to hasten or rise from slumber, yet to do truly have time. Hoch Wilhelm, Nieder mit der Brut und Telg del Schumach mit Bein des Brut. You'll see the lacking preparation and uh, madness. Uh, lacking prepar uh, preparedness modifier. Those initial effects will be determined by your pre war actions, your natural debt and black money mechanic, success or failure of path unique mechanics, situation in the railway situation, number of industrial decisions taken, certain national focus aside, and the thing to diversify elite forces. Ooh. Increase investment in Poland? Oh, we probably should do that. Polish work recruitment. That's not bad. Uh, so, where are we at? Lack of preparedness. Oh, that's not good. Oh my god, recovery rate's really bad. Defense is really bad, too. Well, we're trying to enact the Wehrmacht right now, so... How many divisions we got over there? Oh, they've got a lot. We're just here to hold. As long as we can hold, that's all I really care about. If you can push... Fantastic. Russian invades the Reich's back. Ready to Ostfall. So far, I'm very pleased with how we're holding. Even Finland is... Well, not completely co holding it, but whatever. Uh, yeah, there you go. Losses. We've already lost 4,000. Wow. Not bad. Feature of the army. The Wehrmacht. The land, naval, and air forces of the German Empire remain approximate since 17, 1871. While the ground forces divided into Bavaria, Saxon, Württemberg, and Prussian armies, the Navy and the Air Force are all imperial institutions with their own secretariats and the Reichskanzler's cabinet. This hampers the air service cooperation of our army and makes grand strategic planning difficult as there is no official platform to coordinate the actions of the different branches. This ends the day with the establishment of the Imperial um, Defense Force, or the Wehrmacht, the unified ground forces of the German Empire. The Supreme Command of the Wehrmacht will answer solely to the Kaiser and the Reichskanzler. The ignorant parliamentarians do not deserve to exert, exert any influence upon the military. The centralization of the military is unlikely to be thorough for now, however. The Bavarian, Saxon, and Württemberg armies will still remain, and abolishing them would cost a bit too much political capital. Once the war is won, we can finish the job. A national army for a national empire. Oh! And now we're on two fronts. Recovery rate. Enhanced mobilization strategies. Uh, military railroads would be good, too. It's a call of the soldier. Call it a total war. The Valkyries are unlike any other conflict before them. They are wars of total resource mobilization, and only a nation completely dedicated to war will prevail over time, or over their enemies. We must see this call to total war. The German nation will rise to the great struggle as one. Oh, crap. You probably want to stop doing that, and you want to get into home as fast as you possibly freaking can. Yeah. And then post that, what do we have? Victory or death? Uh, in the eyes of some, the hair, much like his predecessor, the Prussian army must be apolitical and serve as the right arm of the Kaiser. We disagree. Our soldiers' minds must be injected with national patriotic ideology. They need to know that they're fighting for the nation's survival and will be willing to sacrifice themselves as necessary. The Reichskriegsflagge. The Reichskriegsflagge is a war flag of the German Empire, officially intended solely to be sown of fleet. See, yet its fame among the German nation has led to it widely being adopted in national propaganda. It's especially beloved by the political right, to whom it is associated with the glorious victories of the First Valkyrie and the national unity that they desire to replicate with their agenda. Now that Germany is once again embroiled in this world war, the question of using the Reichskriegsflagge. Uh, I'm gonna go here. Uh, has returned once more. Though the Schwarz Weiss Rot will remain the official flag throughout the conflict, we have the option of relying deeply on the war flag and wartime propaganda, as well as flying in the official instances at the front, making it de facto state flag. Alternatively, is it the government's liking? Uh, the peacetime track letter can be maintained as the primary national symbol. The flag war will the war flag will get us to victory once more. Ah, beautiful. Crown Prince Wilhelm offered army command. Wilhelm, the crown prince of the German Empire, has been offered to be commissioned into the army once again by the Kaiser's inner circle to lead the troops in the Second Valkyrie, during the First Valkyrie. It was one of the supreme commanders of the Western Front, and though his leadership was criticized by many of his generals, he returned home victorious. Perhaps he can prove, I'd, or prove himself on the battlefield once more. Command hails group a crown prince once again. Let's give him out of command of the war. Well, does, would he die if we do that? So right now we're doing better in uh, the, the Netherlands. We're not doing so well in Spain. Good god, that looks terrible. Uh, the Social Republic is actually not doing that well against the Italian Republic. And we're doing well in Switzerland. We've lost a tiny bit of territory in Ukraine, which, well, I guess, maybe, do we have to take any territory? No, we didn't really take any. Yeah, if anything, we've been losing territory in Ukraine. Let's not talk about that. Um, 
We've also pushed in a slight bit. So overall, it's a mixed bag right now. Um, we're just here to hold. Also, Denmark left our faction, unfortunately. So we have to go kill them. So I'd like to kill off uh, the Dutch first. And then go back. And then take out the Dutch. Or not, not the Dutch. Take out, finish the Dutch. Finish the Danish. And get up to Norway. So we can help out Sweden. Because that would be fantastic if we could help out Sweden. All uh, right, now we're not... We're doing... Okay. Oh. Uh oh Well, uh, over the last century, Asia has become a, a continent largely dominated by Western powers. And though these exact powers have changed from London and Paris to Berlin, facts remain unchanged, much of the eye of Tokyo now. Though the status quo threatens and shatters the Empire of Japan and the German Empire go to war. Oh, crap. However, uh, despite hopes for peace, many have seen this turn of events as inevitable. Japanese plans for an Asian center around itself or an Asia center around itself, were always in incompatible with German domination in the region. And at the West engulfed in crisis, Tokyo's leaders doubted whether another chance to realize these ambitions may appear. Whichever side fortunes uh, may favor, one thing's for sure, Asia's future hangs in the balance. Singapore will never fall. Well, let's see. At this point, um, let's give our guys a break. They pushed very, very, very hard into here. And we're doing alright, overall. It was a great no, but at this point, we gotta make sure that we're good. We almost lost... Ugh, looks like we might lose... Yeah, we're gonna lose Bruges. Ugh... I could like it if you would not to attack. Just help defend for the most part. I mean, a lot of this is. Oof. But we got to call it a total war. So here's one. This one. Uh, what else we got? We still do mass public works. Corporatist interests. This would be good to, good to do as well. Better recovery rate would still be nice. Conscription loss costs would still be very good. Mandatory uh, unit membership. Yeah. To control the German proletariat will show require every enterprise with a large enough number of workers to have a uh, cell of the Gewerkschaftsbund. Workers will be required to join a state-owned trade union, receive patriotic, patriotic education through their institutions, and have loyalty instilled and receive benefits such as vacations, which I do want to do, but this would be nice too. Understand warfare? Yeah. In total war, nothing is beyond the pale. Chemical and biological weapons must be considered. If we were to break the will of the enemy and shatter them, Let's put an end to measly regulations and morale qualms and unleash unrestrained German power upon our opponent. Because right now, we still have lacking preparedness. So, that's that's absolutely killing us right now. The psychology of the foot soldier. Technology can turn the tide of a battle but apply it correctly. But only a determined and courageous foe or force reliably wins whole wars. We need to improve the psychology of the foot soldier and sell with them the national side ideology and prove their conditions and establish strict training which will turn draftees into warriors. God, that sucks. This really sucks. We lost a lot of convoys up there. Um, just don't don't lose Belgium. Remain declared as a treaty of Bucharest, null and void, of course. Um, the end of the first Valkyrie. <clears throat> uh, seeing a devastating treaty imposed under Romania, the infamous treaty of Bucharest, which so many political forces in that country struggled against until now, though. Um, taking advantage of our distraction with the second Valkyrie, the president of the Council of Ministers, whoever of Romania, has formally declared that the treaty is null and void, and should we want to review our relationship with Romania, we should have to negotiate with them on equal terms. The treaty provision German officials that we were supposed to monitor the government's decisions once sidelines not fully dismiss our leaving the country and drove as Romania as establishing proper control over its river ports at the mouth of the Danube, having also received or seized control of the Danube Commission's activities on its territory. Even if we win the struggle, which we will most likely do, we will have to deal with them somehow in, some, in the future in order to secure our continental hegemony. Darn it. God, we just don't have enough uh, guys up here yet. Oh, sad. Enemies probably be good. Yeah. This ain't easy. Definitely it's not easy. We got here. Global presence, battleship, research speed. I like the repair speed. I do like that a lot. Repair fast, 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 fast. They're just trying to destroy us all over the place here. God dang it. Okay, Japan. I guess do your Japanese things, I suppose. Can you help support here, maybe? You are still getting attacked. Well, that's good. It's 1940, of course. Is there anything else we can do for 40? That, that's good. Anti-tank, maybe eventually. Perhaps. Ew. A lot of convoys here. Ships, what are you doing? Level 5, Boeing. It's not bad. This stuff is okay. 
How much more do we need to wait? Eight? Oh my god. That's why I like the repair speed. In cooperation with the Entente, many of our military experts believe that a war against the Third, Inst Third International will be difficult to win without some additional forces applying pressure to the Syndicalists. Fortunately, the experts in the Dominion of Canada appear to agree. They have suggested that we meet with the leaders from the Entente, now that they are also more than coming to France, and discuss the possibility that we might work together. The alliance is out of the question, of course. What is the question of how much cooperation is worth, considering they must fight the Syndicalists somehow? You know what? We'll do that. Oh, America's in the war, huh? Oh, god dang it. Unfortunate. Well, there's the United States of America. The good old PSA. Gospel of wealth, soft pocket power guns. What is this? Yeah, you might as well join the war then. So, yeah. The world's on fire. I mean, it's heavily on fire. The Antal's looking thick. Rock's backed. Well, we're doing we're doing what we can. Don't know Adrian was down there. We're down here in Italy, too. It's not terrible. Russia is just going all out. Oh, and we also have Georgia here, too, because they did expand a little bit, but... We'll see how long that lasts. King Urupersh receives army command. Following the announcement of the crown, Prince Wilhelm will return to the front for the Second Valkyrie. King Urupersh of Bavaria has been recommissioned as a commander in the Imperial German Army as well. The commander of the Hales Group, Urupersh of Von Bayern during the Valkyrie, he proved himself an able commander despite having received his position through nobility, and was considered by his peers to perhaps be the only German royal deserving of military command during the entire war, as he is the reigning king in nearly 70. Urupersh may not lead with the same capacity he used to, but has been welcomed by the OHL nonetheless. He will lead the Bavarian troops to glory. And we're really out of guns, which is not good at all, so... If anything, I'm actually going to cut down how many divisions we want to make. Because we don't have that much to spare. Which should help our stockpile of guns. Quite a bit. Hey, thank you, Transamur. Good. We appreciate that, Transamur. Just please, don't lose. We got you. <clears throat> this is Fuck Wolf. Agility. Oh, why are you attacking? I mean, I guess, you know, over here is fine. You know, we're doing pretty well right there. And everyone's killing each other. Growing preparedness. The initial glut of the Imperial German army and the industrial base appears to be receding. The firing prowess of our soldiers is getting back to shape thanks to the growing flow of new materials from the factories and a wave of propaganda. Slowly, the Empire will turn back to fighting shape, and when that happens, all of our enemies will tremble. Better people will labor without the fanfare. Further reductions of the lack of preparedness modifier will happen in the background. This pace will reach Paris in no time. Oh, God. I don't like this lacking preparedness modifier. It is not fun. There was a Hudon clique. At least we're holding here in Ukraine for the most part. We lost a few tiles here. If the locals and interim politicians attack the government. Well, if you want to read this one, please go ahead. God dang it, come on. Yeah, look at that. That's not good. We really need to push here. Slowly but surely, we will get the Netherlands. I hope, God dang it, I hope. Um, the Halifax Conference. Leaders from the Entente and the Reichsback gathered in Halifax today in order to discuss the possibility of cooperation in the war against the Third International. While this cooperation would consist of well, was not too difficult to ascertain the military and naval access between all members, but more importantly for the Entente, the willingness on the part of the Reichsback to stay out of both France and Great Britain once the war is done. This will allow for a swift return to Europe for the French and British exile governments, and the ultimate goal of both, but now a single question hangs over the conference. Will the German Empire not agree to such terms, and if so, what would they ask for in return? That's an excellent question. 80%, so we're pretty good so far. Foreign policy... Oh, we need to invade Denmark. Our small northern neighbor doesn't seem to know what's good for them. With them, we could shield the Baltic Sea from outside incursion, but their narrow-minded policy of neutrality makes this impossible. We need those. We need to move in because significantly more important interests are at stake than the tradition of neutrality of the small North Sea country. Yeah, pretty much. Never silently forces. We could. Uh, we could do that. Bolster spirits. Gain more worse part. Utilize domestic film industry. The German film industry has also developed significantly in the last decade. For the population. Star for entertainment. We stand to benefit to, from cinematic production design to serve patriotic sentiment. Deutsche Reichsbahn. And everything there in Poland, too. So. Pass the defense. Not bad. Hello. Our demand, staying out of both France and Great Britain in the peace conference following our future victory would mean the German Empire. Walking away from a long and costly war with little to show for it. Possibly two restored neighbors who have vanquished, we have vanquished previously would have no reason to be fond of us. We cannot rely on the gratitude, so do we even consider the idea? What do we ask, do we ask for in return? That's the name of the public hostage reign. They must join me in Europa.
kind of see if we can do that one. Let's see if they agree to that or not. Yeah, there's quite a few divisions there, which is quite unfortunate for us. But, if we can take away their air base... Oh, German colonies are recognized. The French and British colonies gained by the Germans since the First Valkyrie have been a sticking point. Some annex, some others occupies temporarily due to the lack of what the Germans claimed was a competent government to administer them. Now the Germans have demanded uh, the colonies in Africa and Southeast Asia uh, to be rec uh, officially recognized as theirs, for still on future efforts to see them restored. And the Antonis agreed, it's a symbolic gesture perhaps, but one that can prevent a great deal of conflict in the future. Good. Do we demand more? Oh yeah, we, you bet we do. Okay, so we got enough here. Probably good war economy. Or we could grab someone else. This here would be very nice. Uh, anything here we really care about too much? Honestly? It's not bad. Not bad. But probably war economy. Oh, come on. Seriously, bro? Do we demand more? We made it this far in the negotiations. Do we demand more to, uh, <clears throat> concessions from the Entente? Or do we have reached a successful conclusion to the treaty? I want everything. I bet you we'll blow up our guys down here, too. So we're going to place this build here, aren't we? That's not good. There you go. Can you get a Hague? Maybe, yeah. So as long as you don't get us encircled, the French state refuses. It seems the French will not even accept an offered hand of assistance, believing that the membership of Middle Europa will allow us to economically dominate the country. And they are correct, of course. Surely they do not think we'd allow France to restore itself without having some kind of control. We must ask ourselves whether it's worth the conference is over. Yep. You can blame the French. They've chosen poorly. Sure, guys, we'll take stuff. Can you guys do this? Maybe, maybe not. Middle Europa Commission Summit, choice of agenda. Nice. Should I hold? Can you go here? No, that's fine. We're gonna lose all of Asia anyways. But still, they're, we're losing Spain. We can't, we'll sneak some subs here too. We bet we need to get some better subs as well. Hello. Oh. Uh. I don't think we've got enough score to give two Sicilies anything here. Victories. How much score do we actually have? We have none, so. Hey, that's not half bad. Look at that. That's actually pretty good overall. Good for our ally. Anti air upgrades. Oh, uh, what else? Let's see. Rhine metal. All this stuff, yes. We do have a cup of tea here, but unfortunately, it seems like we're probably out of time here for this episode. Well, we're, we've hold, we're holding the line. Well, for the most part. Don't look at Spain. And Ukraine has kind of stabilized, which is pretty good for us as well. Uh, there's no real place for us to really have a striking landing blow, but... And we slightly lost a little bit of territory, but we're going to build ourselves up even more. Because we need to. Because we should. And hopefully we don't lose Sweden, which would really suck. But hey, if you enjoyed the episode, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see if we can hopefully continue on with the war and maybe actually make some ground. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of... Your day.